We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the committee uh, on dispensary facilities, and I'll let our uh, committee members introduce themselves and say a little bit about themselves, and then we'll get started. My name is Ken Palermo. I'm currently the deputy director of the Division of Community and Public Health within the Division of Health and Senior Services. Jim Ely, I'm a physician out of uh, Northwest Missouri. I'm also a state representative. Andy? Uh, Andy Fechtel with Fechtel Beverage. We're uh, you know, a beer wholesaler in uh, Central Missouri and uh, been doing this for a long time. So <laughs> not medical marijuana, just a beer. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Um, for those that didn't hear this morning's announcement, if you need a bathroom, they're out the door to the right by the spiral staircase and to your right. Um, if this morning is any indication of this afternoon, we'll hopefully be out of here within an hour. Um, the department was charged with uh, implementing uh, Amendment 2, uh, Article 14 of the Missouri Constitution. In that, we have very specific deadlines that we have to meet in regard to rulemaking, putting forms out for uh, licensees to be able to see, and uh, the questions that we're going to be asking. Uh, those uh, have to be in place by June 4th. Uh, because of the unique process and the speed in which this is having to occur within the Missouri uh, rulemaking process, we're having to do that by emergency rules. So we're trying to give the public uh, the greatest amount of opportunity to comment on the rules, comment on the questions, uh, and we're going to take that information, include them in our revisions to those documents, and uh, then issue emergency rules the last week or so of May. So uh, the rulemaking process is moving forward. The last set of rules uh, for public comment should be put up within the next week. Um, we are taking your comments uh, until the very last moment on those, and so we would encourage you to go to our website, review those, and give your feedback. Uh, it's valuable. Um, we are learning as we go, and uh, the people in the industry, your, your input's imperative to the process. So we have created uh, 10 committees similar to this, uh, and the purpose of those committees is to discuss the questions that the department has drafted. Um, and in order for us to get the best uh, best questions possible, we're reaching out to stakeholders uh, and then we're putting them in front of subject matter experts and people that have uh, worked in similar type businesses is what the, uh, the questions pertain to. Uh, I will say that uh, the questions are designed in a very specific way. They're somewhat general in nature and they're somewhat specific in nature depending on the individual question. We're doing that in such a way where you have the opportunity to explain your experience or your plan, how you're going to meet the uh, questions requirements, and we can then put it on a scale of whether it is satisfactory, unsatisfactory, uh, distinctive, um, or there's another one. Uh, and we're going to be grading our, uh, our applicants based on that scale. It's going to be done through blind scoring, uh, third-party scoring that we're going to be putting forth in the next uh, several months as far as getting that RFP in place, uh, so we don't know who those are at this point, but it's forthcoming. Um, I should say, I'm Richard Moore, General Counsel for the Department, this is Steve Deerhoff, who's uh, a legal counsel in my office as well. The Office of General Counsel has been res uh, given the responsibility of working on the rules and the questions, and um, so with that, we'll kind of talk quickly about what the process is and how we'll go through the, the rules, uh, or excuse me, the uh, questions. There are approximately 150 questions that we put out on our website. Um, these are approximately eight of those questions, um, very specific to dispensaries. Uh, that's not to say that dispensaries' uh, answers on the other questions are not important. It's just that these are these are pigeonholed exclusively for dispensaries. Um, and with that, uh, we're going to we're going to read. I'll read each question out. Um, I will present it to the committee to get their feedback on whether they believe the question is appropriate, whether it should be modified, or whether it should be deleted. Um, we hope that it's uh, a consensus uh, type of discussion where we can all agree that uh, a certain direction is the appropriate direction for this committee. And then once the question's been determined, we're going to ask the committee members to give their uh, level of importance to the question. The uh, scale of which we're using is slightly important important, highly important, and critically important. So with that, uh, does committee members have any questions before we get going? No. No. All right. 
Question 127, describe the proposed location, or excuse me, describe how the proposed location will be suitable for the facility. Any questions or concern on that one? Hearing none, the department recommends a weight of three, which is highly important. Any thoughts on that? Seems appropriate. Thank you, Kurt. Andy? I think it seems appropriate. Okay. Question 128, will you have an employee training program for providing education and or counseling on how your products may interact with a qualified patient's condition? If yes, describe. Any comments on that question? I think it's uh, a critical uh, question uh, with the idea that are we doing things medically? Are we presenting, uh, as you all know, I'm bald-headed. Uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to be saying medical marijuana is going to cure my baldness. I think that kind of a, how we're, how we're selling uh, the product, uh, is it appropriate? I think uh, that's a critical element if that's uh, how you're reading that. Uh, and so training the employees on uh, uh, let's, let's do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I know my hyperbole is uh, there, but uh, I think that's uh, appropriate in, in uh, how we move forward with this. I would agree with that. I think that there's a sense of a, there's a certain assumption level that if you're walking in to buy a medically based product from a licensed uh, you know retail establishment, that the people that work there would have at least some knowledge of that. I think that that's uh, that, that, that to me seems like there's if the assumptions there that the training ought to be there as well. I agree. Okay. So with that question, uh, the department recommended a weight of highly important. What, which, what is your opinion on that? My perspective, it should be highly important. I agree. I agree. All right. Question 129, describe how the dispensary will be accessible to patients, including but not limited to patient access to parking and public transportation. I think it's appropriate given the variance rate we find across the state in delivering uh, medical or medical-like services. Any other thoughts? Sounds appropriate. You know, they like the, the how it's weighted. All right, seeing none, um, the department recommends important. What's the committee's feelings on that? Seems right. I agree. I agree. Question 130, describe any plans you have to deliver medical marijuana to patients off-site. And I will say that the Constitution requires the opportunity for delivery. I think, do you think there needs to be some sort of addition or some sort of, uh, you know, uh, phrase to dive deeper into there, like training? for you know the employees that would be delivering off-site i mean i'm just thinking again about locally you know we've got a pharmacy with whaley's here and the delivery driver probably doesn't have the same level of understanding of the product um as what the pharmacist is writing the prescription um also i know like in the alcohol industry it's been you know we've, we've not allowed home delivery on products because you know it's kind of depending on who answers the door and you know those kind of things too so does there need to be any additional probing in that question as to you know training that would be provided you know those kind of things or is it is it okay being general enough just saying tell us your plans um, I will tell you that uh, these questions and I probably should have uh, mentioned this earlier this these questions are designed um, first looking at the Constitution second looking at the draft rules that uh, we are currently working on uh, and then based on that we came up with the questions to flush out things further the minimum standards that are required in the rules, uh, we're not getting into those topics because they're minimum standards and all um, licensees are gonna have to abide by those requirements. 
In regard to um, delivery and sale, there's going to have to be um, a qualified, uh, excuse me, an agent, an individual with an agent ID card, which has to go through certain requirements to receive that card for them to work in the dispensary at all. There are certain requirements of what has to occur when the point of sale uh, happens, uh, meaning the uh, you got to see the agents, or excuse me, you got to see the qualified patient's ID card. You have to see their state issued ID. Um, you have to interface with the department's uh, website that's going to show that the uh, individual trying to purchase the medical marijuana has uh, authority uh, and remaining uh, limits within their, within their four ounces or whatever the, the physician certifies them to be. Um, so there are safeguards that I believe that are in place that will take care of uh, those things that you brought up. Okay, so if the plan in place did not meet those criteria, they would have an unsatisfactory answer, I would assume, right? Yes. Okay, okay, gotcha. So with that information, I think it's appropriate the way it is. Yes. Andy? I agree. Okay. Um, we, at the department, put a weight of one, which is slightly important. What is your feelings on that? Correct. I'm good. As am I. I would agree. Question 131. Provide your proposed hours of operation. Certainly need to post it. I agree. I agree. The department put a one to two, which is slightly important to important. What's the committee's feelings on that? I'll be even important. Correct. I agree. So uh, I don't know if you heard that, Andy, but I think they're both agreeing on important. On important, I, I would lean more towards slightly, but I'm okay with regular importance. Okay, I'm hearing important. Important. Correct. Important. Correct. Question 132. Do you have experience in healthcare as it relates to advising or selling uh, med medicinal or therapeutic products? And I will say that the Constitution under this topic requires healthcare to be considered. I think it needs to be there. I think it's uh, important. Are there any qualifiers in what healthcare is meant to be? in this interpretation? The Constitution does not define that for us. Okay. So the question is designed to not limit it so that the applicant can um, answer the question in any way they see fit. Okay. I think I, it's an, oh, I'm sorry. I think it's uh, very important. I'd almost uh, say it needs, it's uh, very critical. Okay, so as far as the question goes, is everybody okay with the question? I am. Yes. Yes. Okay. The department put a weight of important as our recommendation. Any thoughts from the committee? I think it's a it's a an area that uh, that would express some professionalism in what we're doing, and so therefore I think it's uh, highly important. Okay. I agree. Highly important. Okay, we'll change that. Will the facility have a physician or pharmacist retained for consultation by clients if needed? It's a good question. It's an appropriate question. I agree. The department put a proposed weight between important and highly important. And what is your feelings on that? I think uh, what comes to mind uh, is it necessary to have, so to speak, uh, a uh, is it a requirement to have a it is not medical a director? It's not a requirement uh, constitutionally. You're saying right? Okay. Um, I think that lends you to some credibility, but is it necessary? Um, and I guess one thing to remember is this is not, or hi highly likely, it is not the prescribing mm -hmm. or certifying physician. It would be a, another physician retained purely by the. I, I think it's a. I think it's appropriate. Okay. Um, 
So then we gave two to three. So what, what does the committee believe on weight? Two to three. Oh, I need, a, I need one of those. I would say a three. Okay, so we're saying highly important. I Andy? do. I do. I think, you know, I mean, I, I don't disagree with highly important. I mean, what we're talking about already having training in place and then something that you would have to have a prescription against. Um, I don't know that I think you know, I'm, I'm fine with highly important, I guess. That's fine. You know, that tends to provide some oversight, I believe. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, as a, as a person who uh, feels like I'm have a lot of over there's a lot of oversight on me and so I uh, uh, I that may be a better question uh, more from a, a pharmacist uh, mindset but from the physician side uh, uh, I feel like there's a lot of oversight on me so all right well, that concludes the questions um, is there any additional questions you all would like to have us consider Oh, uh, I think we did. Didn't we say the weight was going to be highly important? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So then, uh, is there any any additions, additional questions you would like to discuss? I don't have any. No, I think uh, this provides a pretty good picture. Okay. And you know, I think I said this earlier, but this is in addition to the approximately 120 right. other, 25 other questions that there will be. Yeah, um, I agree. When you look at it on the whole of all the questions that are proposed in the application, I think that makes sense. Unless you know, one of the other committees or something like that would uh, would drop a couple of questions off, you know? Yeah. Okay, very good. Then um, I, all those in favor of accepting the questions as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The ayes have it. We thank you for your assistance. Uh, and that concludes our meeting.